We learned a short time ago that the measure of the central angle, that is a angle with its vertex at the center, is equal to the measure of the intercepted arc, that arc that's cut by the rays of the angle. So what if I take this and move it away from the center? Well, you can see that the angle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until I finally reach a point where I'm actually on the circumference itself. Now, this is a very special angle, and we're going to call this angle an inscribed angle. And this inscribed angle will be anywhere along the circle here, and it's going to have the property that its measure is exactly one half the measure of the intercepted arc. So again, the central angle, the angle C at C here, is equal to the arc, and this angle D is exactly one half. Well, a natural consequence of the previous theorem is that if I have two inscribed angles which intercept the same arc, they must be congruent. It makes sense since both of these angles intercept the red arc. Both of these angles, that would be the magenta angle here and the blue angle here, are a measure one half the red arc, I could even visualize that by superimposing them over each other. Since they both are half the measure of the same arc, they both must be the same measure and therefore they are congruent. So a wordy theorem here, if a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, then the hypotenuse is a diameter. Now that makes sense. And conversely, if one side of an inscribed triangle is a diameter, then that triangle must be a right triangle and the right angle must be on the vertex that is opposite the diameter. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, you've probably seen it in other textbooks said much more simply where if you've got this angle B, remember B is an inscribed angle, so it must intercept a 180 degree arc because its measure is half the intercepted arc, well that, make, that means it intercepts a semicircle so all angles inscribed in a semicircle are 90 degrees. Now maybe you want to look at it that way but no matter how you look at it, the right triangle inside inscribed in the circle, the diameter is the hypotenuse. Now let's apply our inscribed angle theorem to this problem. And this is number four in your exercises, section 10.4. Well, I've got two given arcs here and I'm looking to find measure of angle G, which is inscribed. Well, clearly the first thing I need to do is find this arc, the green arc out here, and that's easily, uh, easy enough. I take away from 360, the seven and the 120. I now have an arc of 170 degrees and then simply take half of that and the measure of angle G is 85 degrees. The inscribed angle is equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc and we're done. Let's apply our new theorems to exercise number 10 from section 10.4. Well, two pairs of congruent angles. Now we've got the obvious vertical angles here, but let's, let's go for something more interesting. We've got angles B and A, both intercept the arc CD. And I have that angle C and D both intersect the arc AB. So right there, I've got two pairs of congruent angles. And if I wanted to make another conclusion from that, I could also throw in that these two triangles would be similar and they would be similar by angle angle. And that's it. Well, in this exercise, number 17 in section 10.4, your author is giving you these figures that they are calling stars. And well, I'm going to assume so there's some regularity in these figures and we'll just work, we'll work out the solution from there. Well, let's just start with one of these figures. So I'm going to simplify this. Let's just look at one and I think we'll get the pattern. Now, um, I've shaded a region here so we can imagine this, if you will, this slice. 
which would represent these 72 degrees. Where did I get that from? Well, 360 divided by 5 would be 72. So I'll say that's a 72 degree arc, and the inscribed angle must be half of that, which would be 36. And imagine if I were to rotate this figure around in either direction. I'm going to have another 72 degrees of arc here, and of course another 36 degrees of inscribed angle here. And I'm going to keep this momentum going. 72 degrees of arc and 36 degrees of inscribed angle. I think you see where we're going with this. We keep going. Another 72 degrees up there, 36 degrees of arc, or I'm sorry, of angle, inscribed angle, 72 degrees, half of that, 36. In each case, and we've come all the way around to the beginning again. So this shape, this pentagram looking shape, I've got five points, each of them with 36 degrees. Right, or forming an angle of 36 degrees, I can add those all up and I'll get 180. But I could have expected that because the sum of all the 72s is of course going to be 360 degrees. It's going to complete a full circle. And therefore, uh, since each inscribed angle is one half of its intercepted arc, then one half of the sum is going to give us another sum of 180. Now we could apply this to any of the other figures and I think we would see the exact same results. This one just with more sides. But the theory is still the same. And we're done. In this exercise we're trying to prove that AB is a tangent to the blue circle. Now the blue circle and the red circle meet at B. CMA is the diameter of the red circle. So let's go for the obvious. Let's draw in a triangle right there. We'll draw in CB here. And we know it's a right angle because any angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. Once we've got that, and I think we're home free. We can clean up the drawing. And if we simplify it like this, you see we have a tangent. Now to restore the, the drawing, however, let's mind you that we could have drawn this a little bit differently, th that the relative sizes are not important. The relationship holds regardless of the relative size of the red and blue circle. So there you go. AB is a tangent.